Um, so today I'll be discussing various threats to the survival of battlefield assemblages in the UK and the implications for their preservation, which forms part of my PhD research. And obviously it's going to present a very summarised review of my research and my results. Um, my work focuses on 17th century sites of conflicts from the Civil War period. So today I'll be discussing the nature of battlefields as landscapes and archaeological sites, how they're currently managed in the UK, why they're threatened and how we can assess the state of their condition. Also how we might be able to develop strategies that will aid in the global management of battlefields and indeed any vulnerable sites with assemblages in topsoil deposits. So the nature of battlefields makes them vulnerable and fragile assets as the majority of their archaeological data exists as metal artifact scatters in topsoils. This includes materials such as dress accessories and fittings from clothing or coinage that may have been dropped during the conflict. But the most plentiful material recovered is projectiles from the Civil War battlefields. Analysis of bullets can reveal evidence of manufacture what gun was used during the conflict, um, whether they hit the, the required targets, as well as the history of the bullets after they were deposited in the ground. However, residing in topsoils make these artifacts vulnerable to threats from things such as weathering, development, um, as well as agricultural processes, and things like illicit, illicit metal detecting. Battlefields in England have very little legislative protection. As Civil War sites contain artifact scatters, but usually not structural remains, um, they cannot be scheduled under the Ancient Monuments and Archaeological Areas Act of 1979 that covers the UK. The Register for Battlefields of 1995 highlights their significance as archaeological sites, and planning consent is restricted on these sites. Um, but agricultural processes continue to be carried out on them. The majority of battlefields in England reside on agricultural land, and farming is the greatest threat to plough soil assemblages. The conservation of scheduled monuments in cultivation, or the COSMIC project, carried out by DEFRA and English Heritage, highlighted certain agricultural processes as posing a serious threat to these sites due to the depth of the cultivation. So you can see in this photo that I've added, um, it's an image of the potato, some potato trenches at the Battlefield of Marston Moor in Yorkshire, which just highlights the depth and destructive force of the plough that's been applied on this site in particular. So how do we know what sort of condition these buried assemblages are in? My research has focused on comparing three sites from English uh, sites of conflict correlating the condition of the bullets with their burial environments. Three main factors affect the condition of artefacts on these sites. So it's a combination of the soil chemistry and geology of the site, the current and historic land use of the sites, and the composition of the objects themselves. Ploughing has been an issue for archaeological sites for decades, though less work focuses on direct impact on the assemblages and the, the, the condition that they're in. The act of ploughing um, obviously churns and aerates the soil, altering the structure and chemical balance, um, making anything residing in that soil vulnerable to decay from mechanical as well as chemical damage. Ploughing can cause artefacts to break apart as well as encourage abrasion from soil particles, particularly in very sandy soils. Corrosion is also likely to accelerate in this context. So corrosion takes place more readily when there is a lot of water and oxygen available in the system. And so plough soils are an ideal medium for this reaction to take place. The main problem with plough zone archaeology is that the context is in a constant state of change. Each time an artefact's environment changes, it will be placed on a new path of decay, which happens pretty much annually in a lot of agricultural soils. In order to understand what effect this has on the buried assemblages, I developed a method for assessing the condition of 17th century lead bullets as my object type case study. 
um, based on a five category system assessing the quality of their preservation. The, each category combines to focus on different issues relating to the surface of the bullets, um, such as the quality of visible surface details or the stability of the surface, as that is where the key um, archaeological data is retained. Um, each bullet is given a score from one to four, with one being very good and four being poor, and you'll see in the next slide how that relates to um, the results. Um, this condition are then correlated with the historic land use on the sites and the geology and natural soil conditions in order to better understand the relationship between the burial environment and the preservation of the artefacts. So here's a summarised view of the condition results from this, the three case studies I used in my work. They're all battlefields or siege sites of the British Civil War during the 1640s. So Edge Hill um, was the first battle during the Civil War, where over a thousand bullets have been recorded from the site during systematic metal detecting surveys. Morton Corbett is the site of a 13th century castle in Shropshire, which was established as a small royal garrison during the Civil War. Uh, surveys are still being conducted at this site, but around 200 bullets have been recovered so far. And Wareham in Dorset was a fortified garrison where at least two sieges were carried out during this period, where over 500 bullets have been recorded from the site. So from the data, we can see the condition results vary quite a lot between the three sites. From Edge Hill, 99% of the collection scored either very good or good in condition, which is indicated in the green and yellow, um, indicating that the vast majority of bullets are very well preserved on the site. Only 1% scored um, lower than good, so in fair condition, which means um, the vast majority are in very good condition. For the Morton Corbett bullets, the condition results are more varied. 86% uh, scored good or fair, though you can see that few um, scored either very good or bad condition. So 8% scored one for ver being in very good condition and 6% scored four for being in poor condition. So there are a few bullets at either extremities of preservation. But at Wareham, there are more preservation issues in terms of the bullets. So 70% of them scored either fair or poor um, in orange and red on the chart, with only 2% scoring very good, indicating that they are generally very poorly preserved. So these sites indicate that condition can vary quite a lot in terms of preservation in topsoil deposits on these sites. If we have um, a quick look at some of the bullets themselves that I've analysed, most of the Edge Hill collection um, exhibit a solid unbroken patina and surface of the bullets with clear surface details and few corrosion issues and they tend to have quite a uniform detailed surface. Morton, the Morton Corbett collection contains some bullets that are like this but then it also contains bullets that show uh, localised corrosion and loss of this patina or surface on them. 37% of the collection also showed signs of abrasion and a wearing down of this protective surface, likely to be due to the burial environment, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, and the wearing bullets are particularly grotty and nasty looking, um, basically, with a, a lot of a lot of suffering, a lot of surface um, instability, breaks, cracks, and deep um, penetrating corrosion, which has led to even areas of bullets being blown out through a process of intergranular corrosion. So the condition does vary quite considerably across these three sites. So, as I said, the condition has a lot to do with the burial environments that these collections come from. So if we first have a, a brief look at um, the Edge Hill site, um, this is predominantly a pasture landscape by the mid 18th century, and in some, in some areas of the site slightly earlier, most of the landscape was enclosed and converted to pasture. The battlefield contains the best surviving medieval ridge and, for, ridge and furrow for any English battlefield. The soils predominantly alkaline clays 
which impedes drainage and oxygen flow in the soil, reducing the rate of metal corrosion. Um, my results um, revealed an average topsoil pH of around 6.9, which is around ne the neutral point, but soils were recorded up to around 8.2, indicating a neutral to al alkaline environment, which is um, a very ideal stable condition for lead to survive. Uh, they really, uh, it's much more stable than in acidic conditions because it will degenerate the material. Some areas of the battlefield um, have been ploughed in the last few decades and there were some indications in my research that this was beginning to have an impact on the condition of the buried artefacts. Even though bullet condition was still good in these areas, it wasn't as good in, as in the pasture areas and more bullets in the arable fields had signs of abrasion and damage to the bullets. So it might be an indication that there is an increasing trajectory of um, condition declining in the bullets, but um, maybe there hasn't been a long enough period of time under the plough to have the effect. But ne nevertheless, the site provides an example of almost perfect burial conditions for the, for the preservation of lead at Edge Hill. So at Morton Corbett, uh, the fields surrounding the castle where the bullets were collected from were gardens or common pasture up until the 1970s, though no ridge and furrow survives, so they must have been ploughed at some point during the post-medieval period. There's a clearer spatial pattern of condition on this site. Bullets in very good condition, marked in green on the map, tend to cluster in areas um, of higher ground or upslope up areas. There's also less indication of abrasion damage upslope, suggesting that ploughing has caused some displacement and damage to the bullets. Um, going downhill, those downslope in, um, in areas of higher water content are in poorer condition. Um, the, soil, uh, the soils of Morton Corbett are mainly sandy loams, so this sand content alongside ploughing will have encouraged abrasion damage to the bullet surfaces, which we didn't see in the Edge Hill collection. Um, so that is one indication of variations in preservation. If we have a quick look at Wareham as well, this is the collection that was in a much poorer condition. 55% of the collection were abraded in contrast to only 9% at Edge Hill and 34% at Morton Corbett. But I couldn't conduct spatial analysis on the bullets because uh, the site's been destroyed in, um, due to building a quarry in the 2000s. Um, but historic land use indicated that the area had been under almost constant arable cultivation since the early 19th century. The soils are very acidic, so around 4.5, um, and it's in a loamy sand environment. So this combination of land use acidity and soil texture are evidently to blame for the poor condition of the bullets. Um, and the high sa sand content, coupled with the regular ploughing of the fields over the last two centuries, will encourage displacement in the soil and abrasion, which is why so many bullets exhibit abrasion damage. I'm going to briefly mention metal composition. Um, when I started my research, it was assumed that the purer the lead in the bullets, the better preserved they would be. Um, but it's not really that straightforward. Um, my results were um, sort of inconclusive as 90% of the sample bullets had over 90% lead content, so there wasn't enough variation to make comparisons. There was a slight indication um, that an increase in tin content could result in poorer preserved bullets, as one contained 63% tin and 33% lead from Wareham, um, which was in a terrible state of condition but obviously this isn't enough data to base a, um, a logical conclusion on tin content and corrosion rates. So need, more work needs to be done on this corrosion analysis. So just to quickly uh, summarize all of that, um, I've developed a method for assessing bullet collections in the plough soil. I've identified several crucial factors affecting their survival mainly soil texture, pH, land use, and sometimes topography. Um, brief summary of the main um, 
preservation factors. Um, but the overarching factor appears to be land use, um, where and cultivation accelerates the deterioration of lead. Um, ideally, such sites would be taken out of the plough to preserve sites and their buried assemblages in future, as cultivation is shown to accelerate this deterioration. Um, and my study's shown that there's a lot more to studying battlefields beside just the battles which took place on them. And by examining these landscapes and their collections, we can develop our understanding of the condition of buried heritage assets, which is applicable to other battlefields and plough soil sites across Europe. Thank you.